So do you ever feel like when you travel, it completely messes up your diet and your fitness routine and it kills your consistency? So I wanna go over this strategy to help mediate all of that and then you have understanding where you are traveling to keep you in line with your goals or to maintain your body. As I just got home from my third trip within four weeks and I don't count my calories, I have fun, I eat a bit of what I want and I do some drinking as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna know what this strategy is and how to implement it. So bring what you can. So I bring an assortment of protein bars in my carry-on and spicy almonds. I think they're called habanero barbecue, something like that. They're like spicy barbecue almonds. So right in the beginning when you go to the airport, you have snacks already in line with your goals. You don't have to go spend a shit ton of money on overpriced food there. All you have to go get is just some water after you've gotten through security. Almonds are amazing because they're calorically dense, but they also fill you up with a good amount of the fiber within the nut. So you actually don't need to eat a lot of them and they keep you full. So it's great for travel because it fits in the carry-on bag. You can have a couple almonds, you also have good micronutrients, and then you can have your protein bars as well to keep the protein up while traveling. And you don't have to spend a bunch of money on the overpriced restaurants within the airport. When you are at your destination and you're in a pinch, at least you have a high protein option. And you have some almonds to snack on without going overboard. Okay, next you're gonna to wanna to stick to your core principles once you are at your destination. When you go out to eat or you have any sort of options, choose the high protein, low carb option. So you don't have to go tracking food if you don't want to. You don't have to be super diligent in the components of what you eat. Get the meat, get the steak, the chicken, the fish, and, and it should be the main source of your calories. So if it's not, then double up on that meat and eat less bread. So personally, when I'm going out to eat, I'm always choosing all of those options and people are amazed by the stacks of meat I have on my plate because I wanna fill myself up with more of those components and then I make sure I get the vegetable sides, I get the fruit sides, and I just avoid the breads altogether. I don't necessarily count it or try to restrict myself in that there. I just make sure the core principle foundation is of macros are in line. Because when you do that, you're gonna satiate a lot more of your hunger on less calories, and you can still cheat when it's worth it, which I'll get into next. So what I mean by that is don't just willy-nilly eat the breads, eat the cheeses, and eat the stuff that's not even that tasty just because you're on vacation. Make it worth it. So stick with the core principles that we talked about, and then cheat with the stuff that's unique and so savory and tasty. At the wedding this past weekend, there was this key lime cake that was specifically made by this baker there that was so amazing that I cheated with that. And I had about two or three slices. I also placed alcohol under here. So if you're on vacation, you wanna drink, then drink. Do it strategically. Be as active as possible. When I travel, I look for all the outdoor things I can do that I can't do in Chicago. Ah! Or maybe I even can do in Chicago, but it's cool to do there, like renting a bike and biking around the city, biking the coastline. I look for a surfboard and some surfing options. I love to do that. Or just go walking, explore the city. Find a gym there, just because it's nice to involve that in your vacation routine. So when you do go out eating and cheating, because if you're coming into the vacation off of a deficit that you've done or discussed, it's very nice to go and work out after eating a lot. Your muscles are gonna be pumped up, your energy levels are gonna be through the roof, and you can get a great workout in and then feel amazing the rest of the day on vacation. And then guys, don't take any of this too seriously. When you're on vacation, enjoy yourself, balance life. When I do that, I hone in on my feelings where if I do drink or have desserts, I tune into the awareness of how I feel that next day when I, I feel gross, I, I have a bit of a cough from inflammation, and I feel lethargic, and I remind myself that those feelings are what I don't have to feel when I'm home because I'm dialed in. And I remind myself how amazing I feel when I am training, when I am on a slight deficit. And I use any guilt associated with, man, I'm getting a bit of body fat now from that shit. Like, Feelings of frustration, I bottle up and I save for the yearning of my return. So when I get back home, I get fucking after it. I am on my game. I'm using all of those negative emotions I felt associated with cheating to my advantage to just obliterate my routine when I come home. Even yesterday when I flew in from North Carolina after a weekend of cheating and I went to the gym first thing because I had those bottle up feelings. I biked my ass to Midtown, the gym, 20 minutes. I spent an hour lifting. I spent 30 minutes in the sauna and hot tub with heat therapy, and then I biked my ass home. And you know what? It was amazing. I enjoyed the hell out of it because I positioned my emotions in a place where it motivates me. 
And then afterwards, I have all those endorphins, and then I sleep like a baby, and I'm ready to dial into my routine the next day. I'm going to tie in how on vacation, the biology behind this, and why we time it with carb and calorie cycling. When we run our deficit, your body needs glucose to function, right? So when you're in a slight deficit, it's going to tap into its glucose stores, which are called glycogen stores. So it gets that glucose from three different areas, from your liver cell, this is the bloodstream, let's pretend, from your muscle cells and from your fat cells. So all three of these happen simultaneously. So the great part about that is as glucose leaves the fat cell, it starts to shrink a little bit. So that's how you notice the fat around your body gets smaller and, and less noticeable, right? Is when you time it with carbon calorie cycling, when we are on vacation or traveling and we eat our desserts or drink, the extra glucose, instead of going right into fat first, is actually fed to the liver cell once the liver cell is full, which it doesn't have a lot of storage, but it has some, it goes to the muscle cell first before it actually goes into the fat cell. So when I come into vacation lean and from a deficit, my stores are actually running pretty low. So I have room off the bat to drop my glucose into these two areas, the liver and muscle cell, and avoid the fat cell. So I can only do so much damage mitigation with that, but it definitely helps. The other upside to this is the more you work out and lift and the, the larger your muscles become, you actually create more glycogen storage for glucose. That's why I try to get as big as I can <laughs> because then I can eat more and not get fat. This is why we pair strength training with progressive overload with caloric deficits and carbon calorie cycling because you can get the best of both worlds. So after these are full, which depending on how long the vacation is for me, eventually happens, it sadly does go to the fat cell, which then increases in size. But by being active and doing the second core principle here with high protein, low carb, you minimize this effect for appetite reasons and also output, caloric output reasons. When you do return, you've mitigated this damage and we get back into our routine. We start converting the glycogen back with glucose and minimize the fat cell again. So that's it guys, when you travel and go on vacation, you stick to these five principles, you take advantage of you know your larger muscle and liver cells and minimize the amount of fat you put on so when you return and you're motivated and you're dialed back into routine to feel great, then you can get back in on your shit and make that net progress we're looking for. If you guys found value in this video, go ahead and drop me a like and a sub. There'll be more videos coming out on particular topics of fitness that people constantly ask me about, you know, I've worked with over 50 people now helping them drop body fat. And this is something I do day in, day out. So I, I really am trying to implement a whole breadth of knowledge to help all of you guys out. If you want to, you know, get to learn more about my coaching, you can hop on call with me. It's free. Um, go ahead and take the call link below and get started that way. Thank you guys for watching the video. And I'll see you around.